Hey, Dominic, the CX guy. Nice to see you again. I know this lighting is not very flattering, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, this is what I got today. So um, quick intro about me, Zenas consultant, eight years of experience, two years as Zenas partner. I've recently uh, concluded a subcontracting agreement with Zendesk where I helped them with the recent surge in projects. And I'm here to share some of that knowledge. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, uh, offering support in multiple languages, specifically how to add a ticket field in multiple languages and then adding it to your form. So um, what we've done in yesterday's lesson, if you, if you haven't seen it, you can go back and see it. We've, we've created a dynamic content placeholder. And today we're going to use that in order to create a custom field. So a custom field is a field, essentially, um, which helps you collect data relevant to your customer's needs or relevant to your business. So um, today we're going to be adding a custom field called type of request. This is what we added in yesterday's lesson. So we're going to categorize our requests, right, based on the types of requests that are coming into the system. So we're going to assume that we have a, um, a, a delivery business and we're going to have a type of request for, for example, for billing. We're going to have one for order and another one for returns. Oh, as per usual, let's jump right in. But before we do, don't forget to like and subscribe and maybe leave a comment if you want to see some special content. Because yeah, I'd uh, love to help out. So let me share my screen. Here we go. Okay. So I am in dynamic content right now. So admin manage dynamic content and I've created my fields, right? For type of request. So I have my form, I gave it a category and I said form type of request. And then I have another form, double colon, double colon type of request billing. And I created all of these fields and these dynamic content placeholders. And I'm going to be adding them in the names of the fields. And I'm going to walk you through how to build this out. So I'm going to go over to ticket fields. I'm going to go to add a field. And first of all, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, a name for it, right? So now I can give it a name type of okay. choose the field type, which is going to be a drop down. I can give it a description, but I don't want to. Uh, now permissions. I do, don't want to make it agents only because I want to introduce this into a form, which I want to use in my web forms in the guide. So I'm going to make this editable for end users. All right. So now it asks me like titles shown for agents and titles shown for end users. So titles shown for agents, it can be English or it can be German. So we're adding a uh, we're adding fields uh, with the translation with the intent of having translations in English and German. Um, so if your agents use Zendesk in English, then we can leave the title in English. However, if your agents log into their Zendesk using German, for example, if they're a German uh, speaking team, then we can have this uh, field name appear in German as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to open our dynamic content uh, window. <laughs> oh my God, this lighting is terrible. Oh, well, tomorrow is going to be better. Okay, so I created a category, right? So if you remember from yesterday's lesson, if you add double colon, double colon, it creates a category. So I have one for form, which we started out with, right? So I have my form type of request, and this is the name of the, of, uh, of the field, right? So type of request, and then I have at der Anfrage in German, and I also have it in French, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy the placeholder. Right, so I'm going to go to my field. So title shown to agents. I want this to be in German for German speaking agents. And title shown to end users. Again, I want it to be shown in the respected language of my end users. Do I want the agents to, to, um, to choose an option before solving the ticket? Yes, I do. Because I want to be able to report on how many types of requests come into the system. And I also want to make it compulsory for end users to choose an option in their category, in their, uh, when they submit a request, 
for the same purpose, for business intelligence to be able to um, create my reports and be accurate about them. Because maybe what, how you can think about this is if you have, uh, for example, if you have a lot of requests coming in for billing, then maybe there's something which is not right in the billing, uh, in the billing section, for example. Maybe you need more documentation for your product. Or maybe you need just like, for example, a small description of, uh, of the field. Uh, it all depends on what you have in mind. All right, um, so I can also add a description shown to end users. And this can also be created with dynamic content if I want to offer support in multiple languages. I'm not going to go over that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and create my field values. So. I will have three options for my types of requests. So I'm going to have, as I said, going back to the form where I have my options, right? So I have billing, order, and return. Let's get billing, copy the placeholder, form, paste it in here. The ones. I don't have this in a in an Excel sheet right now, but usually I keep this in a in a workbook where I keep everything nice and ordered, so I have easy access to to them. I will show you what that looks like in a different lesson. So I'm going to this right now order, and now I have my form again. This one is return. Copy the placeholder. So so look. Uh, so look, okay, Kaylin, paste it in here as well. Okay, so now very important. It's um, in order to create a smooth experience for your Zendesk, especially as an admin, because there's admin experience, there's agent experience, and then there's end user experience or customer experience. So I'm going to show tags, all tags, because these are the tags that are going to be added when I add a um, a drop down field, right? So. And Zenas tries to replicate what I write in here in order to uh, create tags for me. So in the next time I uh, I maybe want to create a report, I'm able to uh, get these uh, tags working well, and I'm able to reference them. Now, if you notice that this is a really, really ugly name, so I need to keep, keep in mind and be mindful that I want to show these tags whenever I create my ticket fields, especially if I'm creating um, if I'm creating fields that are that are needed in multiple languages. So if I'm using dynamic content, I'm always going to have these ugly looking tags, which I need to edit. It's very important to edit them or add them correctly and organized from the very beginning, because if you change them later on, it's going to be a nightmare because these are going to be, uh, you're going to use these in business rules. You're going to use this in macros, triggers, automations. Uh, views even, and if you do and you reference these tags and you, you go in and change them later, the business rules are all going to be screwed up. So you don't want that. You want to create things neatly from the very beginning. So billing is going to be obviously billing. The order is going to be order and then return is going to be return. Now, I'm not sure if I have created these fields, these tags before, but if I have, send us, will let me know that I have uh, duplicates of tags in my system and I'm meant to clean these up and give them unique names. So let's go ahead and save this and see what happens. Okay. Tag order is already being used in a custom field dropdown, which it's not letting me do. So I'm going to just give it a unique name and call it order issue. Let's do this for all the billing issue. issue. Now they're going to be nice and unique. This is a test account, so I don't have to worry about that. Alrighty, so I have added my ticket field. I have added it in multiple languages. Now I'm going to add it to my forms. I'm just going to add it to one, which is the, uh, the default ticket form, which I'm using right now. So I have on the left my um, my available um, ticket fields, my system field that I'm that I have to that I want to use in my form, and this is my these are my available ticket fields. So let's look for my request. I have quite a few. I have a request, and this is it. And I'm just going to add the plus, and here it is. And now I have to remember to save it. 
save it. I'm going to walk you through how this looks like for the agent experience and then for the end user experience. Okay, so I have added this to my form. Now I have to refresh each time. So in order to see the changes in my system, All right? So let's go ahead and add a new ticket and see if we see that. All right, here we go. So I have my, on the left hand side, my, uh, the fields that I need for this ticket and um, that I need to fill out, right? Requester, assignee, followers, tags, priority type, and my type of request, which as I can see, I have them in, uh, in English. So my dynamic content placeholder has uh, shown me the names in English because this is the language that I have for myself in this account, in this uh, instance when I'm logged in as an agent or an admin in this case. I have it in English, so Zenesk is showing me the options in English. Okay, so this is what it looks like uh, in English. So now for the end user experience, so sorry, for the uh, agent experience, I'm going to go to my profile. I'm going to change my language to German. Make sure what that looks like. So language, English, let's do German, Deutsch. Screen. Right, and now I've got a ticket, right? So my Zendesk is now in, uh, yeah, in German. So Rolle, Gruppen, Zeitzone, Sprache, etc. Okay, hinzufügen, okay. And we are machen ein Ticket. Here we go. And here we go, right? So on the left-hand side, as, as earlier, I have my uh, ticket fields. And here's my type of request. It's not the best German, I do admit, <laughs> but um, no worries. Uh, I mean, you can have it in your best wording as, as you want. So right, right, the agent experience right now is showing me the ticket in, uh, in German. So I can, uh, if I'm logged in as a German speaker, I can uh, have access to my ticket fields in the language that I, uh, in German, for example. All right. Now let's have a look at how this looks like in the forms. Right. So let's go. Okay, so I am I'm having this my this is my test account and I'm having it in, in uh, German, but I am logged in as, a, as an admin and of course I do not see the submit request button. Obviously, because I'm an, uh, being an admin or an agent, I don't need to submit a request. I can just create a ticket from inside Zenit. So I'm just going to open an incognito window. Einreichen, so submit request. So yeah, email address, betreff, beschreibung, etc. Priorität. And now here's my option in German, right, in my web form. And uh, I can switch it to English very quick. And yes, yeah, this is it. This is how you do. You add, um, you add your options um, in your fields, right? In your forms, sorry. And you add dynamic content in order to offer support in multiple languages. So I hope this was helpful. Um, I am um, I'm happy to have uh, lessons like this every day. So um, actually, I'm, I'm having these uh, Tuesday to Friday. So yeah, if you want to see some special content, I uh, am happy to help. Comment if you do, and yeah, I'll see you. I'll see you tomorrow. Hope this helped.